Hare Krishna. So we are at the last shloka of chapter number 11. And this shloka is a very, very important shloka which gives the entire essence of Bhagavad Gita. So let's see this very important shloka today. Shloka number 55. Matkar makrin mat paramo mat bhaktaha sanga varjitaha Nirvairaha sarva bhoteshu Yaha samam iti pandava So here, Krishna is saying, O Pandava, O Arjuna, Mat karma krit, mat paramo, the one who works for me and the one who makes me, mat paramo, one who makes me the supreme goal of life, mat bhaktaha, one who is engaged in my pure devotional service, sanga varjitaha, one who is free from the contaminations of what? The two types of contamination, fruitive work and mental speculation. Nirvairaha sarva bhuteshu, one who is friendly to every living being. Here Krishna says, Yaha samam iti pandava, he certainly comes to me. Now all of us, we know the goal of life. The goal of life is to attain Krishna, to go back home, back to Godhead. There is no other goal apart from this. This is the only goal. And here Krishna is telling how that goal can be attained. And very nicely he has put you know, different different activities where he is saying by doing all these things, one can attain me, one can surely come back to me. Here Prabhupada writes, this verse is considered to be the essence of Bhagavad Gita. So we can imagine. <laughs> it's a very very important verse because Krishna is talking something very specific of going back home back to Godhead, to Goloka Vrindavan. So this Bhagavad Gita is a very, very important literature, important scripture for all of us. For all of us who are conditioned to the cycle of birth, death, disease and old age. So there are different gems which Krishna is giving in this Bhagavad Gita. Which solves our current problem that we are going through and which solves our eternal problem of Janma, Mrityu, Jara, Vyadi. The cycle of birth, death, disease and old age forever. So Bhagavad Gita is a very, very important scripture which each and every person in this entire world should read and apply the same in our day-to-day -day life. So here, Krishna is talking about a very important point. Here he is saying that Mat Karma Krit, one should work for me. So that is called as Krishna Karma. Now this Krishna Karma is a very, very important concept. So let's try to spend some time to understand this so that we can implement in our day-to-day -day life. Now what is Krishna Karma? Krishna Karma is, we do every single activity in our life in connection to Krishna. We don't do anything that is not connected to Krishna or that is devoid of Krishna consciousness. Like for example, let's try to see the example given by Srila Prabhupada. So there are many businessmen all around the world and they'll be earning you know, so much in lakhs and millions of dollars. So normally what people do, the great uh, the business giants, okay, they'll get all the profit and then uh, you know, they'll use it for their own sense of gratification. They'll be, build huge residential place for themselves. Now this is called as karma done for one's own self and for which we will get reactions. But now, what is Krishna karma? How can we convert this into Krishna karma? Now, who has given a person the intelligence to do business? Krishna has given. All the raw materials to do business, Krishna has given. And all the workers who are working, what about their strength? Krishna has given. So whom does the profit belong to? Krishna. So whom should the profit go to? Krishna. Then how can this particular activity that a person has done, how can that become Krishna karma? If he uses that profit to build not his own residential place, to build Krishna's residential place, to build a temple for Lord Sri Krishna. Then we can say that, yes, now it has become Krishna karma. Hmm. Now a person might say, see, we are not business, business giants, you know, we are hardly earning anything. So here, you know, Prabhupada says, Tika, if you cannot construct a temple, no problem. Go to a temple and cleanse the temple. We are so used to cleansing our house, cleaning the house and all that. Why not we go to a temple and clean the entire place? And even in our own homes, we can have a nice altar, a nice temple. And every single day we can offer very first class worship. 
with with very nice fragrant flowers and the best uh, standard of incense and the best of the best items of foodstuffs we can offer to the lord and keep cleansing the temple mm -hmm. so in this way our tendency of cleansing is there our tendency of building is there all that can be utilized in service of krishna and that is called as krishna karma and now the person might say that uh, see i don't have that much of time and i've and poor also okay theek hai in some part of the land you can grow some flowers for krishna grow tulsi leaves for krishna and krishna is saying patram pushpam phalam toyam tell me who cannot offer a, a flower who cannot offer a leaf tulsi leaf especially you know when it comes to a country like india no tulsi is there everywhere and she grows everywhere for the benefit of everyone so one tulsi leaf anyone can offer one flower any man can offer one fruit anyone can offer suppose a person says no no all that is very difficult for me water is there anyone can offer water there are so many rivers there are so many ground waters you know which are tapped so we can just fill a glass of water and offer it to krishna with a tulsi leaf so in this way everything is available the only thing is we have to direct that dovetail that towards krishna and that becomes krishna karma and krishna karma is working for krishna making krishna the supreme goal so in this way a person gets closer to krishna and that's what he's saying at the end that he certainly comes back to me so the person will be able to attain krishna very easily and here you know, prabhupad continues and then he makes a statement that about mat paraha so mat karma krit we saw now he's talking about mat paraha the word mat paraha refers to one who considers the association of krishna in a supreme abode to be the highest perfection of life he is only attracted to being transferred to the spiritual sky he does not wish to go to heaven any heavenly planet now one thing we have to understand krishna has told this a brahma bhuvana loka punar avrutan arjuna even if we go to the topmost planet in this material world that is brahma loka still a person has to come down again to this earthly planet so this one thing has to be very very clear that there is no use of going to any heavenly planet any place in this world because every every place is temporary so we have to be very intelligent and make only one goal mat paraha only goal is to attain krishna go back home back to god it to goloka vrindavan that is a permanent place and that should be the goal of life there is no other goal apart from this and a devotee who fixes that as the goal krishna is very pleased and when krishna is pleased what happens he says in the last line he certainly comes to me <laughs> everything that krishna is speaking here if we just follow we will go back home back to godhead hmm. next thing that is spoken here is mad bhakta hmm. now mad bhakta is very important to understand who is a bhakta hmm. not the one who just dresses like you know a devotee tilak kanthi and dhoti kurta sari or whatever he has to be rendering some service to krishna so there are nine different limbs of devotional service श्रवणम कीर्तनम विष्णु स्मरण पाद सेवनम अर्चनम वंदनम दास्यम सख्यम आत्म निवेदनम सो प्रहलाद महाराज इन द 7th कैंट ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम ही इज गिविंग दीस नाइन लिम्स एलोबरेटिंग दीस नाइन लिम्स ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस सो व्हेन वी एंगेज आवर सेल्फ इन हियरिंग अबाउट कृष्णा अबाउट चैंटिंग हिज होली नेम्स अबाउट वर्शिपिंग हिम एंड सर्विंग हिम एज अ सर्वेंट एज अ फ्रेंड एज सरेंडरिंग कंप्लीटली ऑन हिज लोटस फीट देन वी कैन से दैट यस वी आर डिवोटी ऑफ कृष्णा so it's a very important point to note that one can engage in all nine devotional processes or eight or seven or at least one and that will surely make one perfect suppose we say that no all nine is very difficult okay no problem at least one at least one by by hearing just by hearing parikshit maharaj attained krishna and shukadev goswami just by speaking he attained krishna so in this way we see that even by practicing one anga very properly we go back home back to god head and in the age of kali yuga what are we expected just do shravanam kirtanam hmm? by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so what are we doing here we are chanting kirtanam and we are hearing the same shravanam so this will make our life perfect hmm? and then sanga varjitah So this is another important point to note we have to be freed from the contamination of fruitive work and mental speculation so the ones who are doing these fruitive activities and mental speculation we should keep a safe distance from them 
because we are already contaminated and by their association we will get more engrossed in it and get more contaminated so that is sangha varjitah so we have to be away you know from such personalities hmm. so it's a very uh, important point that is made here from uh, rupa goswami's uh, bhakti rasamrita sindhu anya bilashita shunyam gyan karma adya anavritam anukulyena krishna anushilanam bhakti ruttamam so what is no uh, real bhakti the real bhakti or uttama bhakti or topmost devotional service is anya bilashita shunyam we don't have any any uh, other desire jnana karma dhyana avritam it's free from fruitive activities and mental speculation and how is the activity there in uttama bhakti of a pure devotee his his activities are favorable krishna anushilanam his activities are favorable to krishna like see even kans maharaj he was remembering krishna 24 by 7 wherever you would see you would find krishna it's almost like sthavara jangama dekhe na dekhe tara murti anywhere he sees animate or inanimate even in water and food and whatever was there he would see only krishna's face and krishna everywhere now what we will talk about kans will we say that he was fully krishna conscious maybe yes but then not in the favorable mood he was thinking about killing krishna so we as devotees when krishna is saying mad bhaktah he is talking about the devotees rendering service favorably so we have to render service favorably as a servant of krishna and not as an enemy of krishna and then the fourth point that is mentioned sorry fifth point so we saw mat karma krit mat parama mat parama and then mat bhaktah sanga vivarjita now nirvairah sarva bhuteshu a devotee of krishna is friendly to everyone therefore it is said here that he has no enemy how is this a devotee situated in krishna consciousness knows that only devotional service to krishna can relieve a person from all the problems of life he has personal experience of this and therefore he wants to introduce the system krishna consciousness into human society hmm. so we see that uh, you know when when we imbibe this devotional service mode when we start practicing we will see transformation in ourselves and when we see that, that this is benefiting hmm. this is benefiting what we will do we will go and tell people oh this is benefiting you can also implement you can also see you can also apply and see the transformation hmm. so when we do this when we distribute this knowledge to everyone automatically everyone becomes our friend and we become friend of all we become well wisher of everyone so when we experience we can share our experience but if we don't experience what we will share so when we are practicing bhakti every single day we should practice very properly very properly so that we'll get krishna anubhuti we'll get experience of krishna and when we experience krishna we can give that experience to everyone who comes in touch with us and when they also experience the same they will also give it to others and like that this is a chain reaction that happens and guess what we were the root instrument used by krishna and then it goes on and on and on so in this way krishna is saying by doing these activities o oh arjun surely the person will come back to me so the end of 11th chapter krishna has given the sutra krishna has given the way to go back home back to godhead just by just by telling us these five words mat karma krit mat paramah mad bhaktah sang varjitah nirvairah sarva bhuteshu so we are just supposed to meditate on this and see if we are practicing these five elements or not and if to see if we are not then have to implement that in our day to day life and surely krishna is saying that he certainly comes to me we will surely go back home back to god hit so by this last verse we complete the entire 11th chapter which is titled as universal form now let's see all the verses together the summary of the entire chapter in the next video hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna